I, I got to tell you, man, it's fucking refreshing to have somebody like me on that that can actually that actually can talk as much as I can because I can just sit here and listen. <laughs> finally, like he's the guest. So that's I, the I, sound yeah. bite, though. That's the sound bite. It's so refreshing to have somebody like me on. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so this is episode four, and today we're bringing on, we have joining us a four-time Muay Thai kickboxer world champion who's fought in many different events to include the WEC, the K1, and the UFC. He's got 13 MMA fights. He's got a kickboxing record of 23 and 2, and he's even got a boxing record. He was once a contestant on Fear Factor. <laughs> He's, uh, he was featured in MTV's True Life, and um, twice, twice, the only twice. person to ever true do life two of, of an MMA fighter, right? Yeah, True Life, <laughs> I'm an MMA fighter, and True Life, I'm a Muay Thai and, fighter. Uh, host, awesome. even, Which I even, didn't even fight Muay Thai. I fought Muay Kachuk, which is bare knuckle Muay Thai. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. bare knuckle under yeah. your under your belt too. And then uh, also hosted his own show called The Wild World of Spike. Uh, more recently, he's been involved in a bunch of different things in the firearms industry, which is how we actually mm -hmm. got to know him, how we yeah. became friends. And um, although he still maintains pretty close ties in the, in the fight industry, um, but his more modern stuff, his more up-to-date stuff is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, please welcome Mr. Kit Cope. Thank you for having me. Thank we you have for having me. Button for that. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. oh wow. There it's official. Yeah. Cool but light up buttons. When we introduce me, it's it's like oh, nice. nice. Oh, you got the you doubled yeah. it up. But yeah. I have nice. one too. Uh, combos. Yeah. I have one too. Do you? What's your question? No. No. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that is that one, yes. The warm and fitting. Fun. So fitting that one is. <laughs> Like a fairy. I know. Didn't I feel like one? <laughs> I don't I'm know. Not sure. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not sure. I've never. I've never felt her. I meant when let's I was this, doing let's that. Cover that right now. Put that hey, out there. Fucking thanks for coming on. All right. <laughs> We're so thanks happy to have you here, man. You have no idea. You're oh, a great time. Yeah, we we always have a good time, man. Like anytime we've done even simple shit together, like the the out of ammo video, man. Like we. There really wasn't much to that, man, but it was so much fun. Yeah. I have, have to say the Gun Bunny video was the best. When you, <laughs> yeah. when that was the top notch. When you, yeah, find, uh, when you find your people, yeah. it's, it's, it, everything's just easy. Yeah. Bouncing Hell ideas yeah. off yeah. each other until it turns into a yeah. masterpiece, man. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Even if you guys don't think so, we think it was a masterpiece. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Get back yeah, to us. Plug. Scroll, scroll down back and come back. Yeah. It, it's definitely one of my better works. <laughs> <laughs> for sure yeah yeah so so yeah we we uh actually what's funny is brighton and i met you at two different times um i met you when i was still at battlefield when i was doing some work with with uh jt yeah way back and, and yeah and and uh they came into battlefield and uh with nate yeah and uh that's the first time i met nate too good good freaking dude man um and that's the first time I met you, and we actually did some work then. Yep, a little we bit. Did, uh, we did uh, beer bonging. Was yeah. it Gustav beer bonging, or no, was uh, it uh, RPG, RPG beer bonging? RPG, yeah, RPG yeah, yeah, beer yeah. bonging. Yeah. <laughs> right. And then you were helping us film when we did the uh, drinking with Livio. Yep, video. That was a great video yeah. as well. That one turned out really Absolutely. good. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Any, but anytime it's the same thing like what you were talking about. Like when you get when you get those minds together and start bouncing shit off. JT's one of those minds, man. Oh, for you, dude, dude, you just go man. all day long, man. You hang out with that guy and there's, you got content for days. That guy is, he's got the, he's got the greatest ideas and they come from who the hell knows where, <laughs> yeah. right? Because yeah. you'll be doing something completely, completely different. And right. he'll be like, Ooh, what if we did this? But we're not even, we got to drop like, yeah, that's not even a thing <laughs> that we can do that. right now. Right, so you have to fill in the blanks. But it is there, a great yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we'll go do it. And then usually when you go do it, JT's somewhere else because he's already seen another shiny object. But not I mean, only that, but, so he, but he also knows idea, that. And then go. We're willing to do whatever the shit he oh, comes also, up with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, sure. No matter how 
he's been wild he, and crazy. Yeah, he's like, been lucky yeah, to be that. surrounded by those kinds of people. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. Whatever. Yeah. And then I met you at a completely separate time. Yeah. Tracy introduced yep. us for me to work for you at SHOT Show. Right. That was a fun time. Yes, it was. Started out kind of crazy and then went into cool shit. You know, it turned out really well. It'll always, the we'll first always day. make cool shit yeah. out of crazy. Yeah. Right? I but, think it uh, turned out per- better we, than it was supposed to. We overcame. To. We overcame that weekend. <laughs> yeah. We overcame the powers of evil I that weekend. Know. Literally yeah. the yeah. powers I was catching, of right. evil. I was catching Ugh. recaps every night. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, yeah. I come home to him and be like, babe, you have no idea what happened today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These girls there. They're barely wearing anything. <laughs> Dude, that, you're talking about... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh man. we can't, yeah. we can't plug that one. Fully yeah. can't plug that one. Yeah, no. Yeah. No, uh, I, I'm good with that. Yeah, the owners of Arsenal. Terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> terrible people. <laughs> I was talking I about the talking first BCM. year, not the second oh, year the I worked year, for you at Shaw Show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the no, second no, year... The first year, yeah, the year that year, the BCM... Let yeah. me say what happened the first awesome. year at Shot Show. I oh, got yeah, we kicked out of a firearms yeah. booth because I was a woman. Yeah, that for was sure. Great. Well, you were a pretty woman. Yeah, that yeah. Was yeah. Because it, was, it was a yeah, woman yeah, yeah. kicking me out because I was a woman. Yes. Yeah. So now, that was, she was the crazy also, part. She, that year, she, that year, you were dressed in tack I, clothes. No, but I had, clothes. Zi- I had a zip up hoodie and it was zipped all the way up. <laughs> I had full black pants. They didn't even have holes in the knees. No, no, like not even holes. No, I believe they had. Cargo pockets. I believe so too. Yeah, and then I wore pants, um, tan wedges. So, um, yeah, I, was, yeah. I just you can't were, believe bro, I showed up on the job that, that inappropriate. Southern, it's that Southern Baptist <laughs> oh, uptight. And that's, we should have dropped as that. She, as, she was, as she was describing it to me, I was just like, oh, I, I, I know that from when I was younger, man. Like, she I, lost <laughs> that weekend. I've and heard stories about Largely that. because of that. Of that event that happened, she lost about two hundred and sixty thousand dollars in business that weekend. It's tough, man. Yeah, because everybody walked away from it. Wow, after throwing, yeah. after I didn't know right that just, was the impact yeah, of that situation. The, the company that I was working with dropped her completely. Pulled, correct? Yeah, pulled pulled their their standing orders. I don't know if I should say I'm sorry or you're welcome. Oh no, it's a you're welcome. Okay, cool. It's well, a you're welcome. I'll be here sure. all week. Yeah, and then <laughs> that, so we overcame. We overcame that, and then you went to. Uh, I mean, we just kind of pivoted. Wait, hold on. Year two, it started out bad, and then I kind of fucking went along with the pulling our tactical team and just went crazy because they're because they time. were a great time. Oh my god, they were. Yeah. She so brought them much into the fun. club, and oh. I, so I clock oh, out. Of course, crazy of course. horse after. Yeah, of they course. came. So they came over to the club afterwards. So she's like, "Hey, I don't know if we should say that out loud." So I clocked Absolutely. out. Okay. Absolutely, they would. They would appreciate it. Actually, <laughs> they're so cool. So I clocked out, and I get to go hang out with them. <clears throat> And so I'm trying to make sure that they're having a good time or whatever. And like, everybody's different. So at the club, it's a, it's a gentleman's club, by the way. So at the, at the club, you, you don't know what, what to, what people are expecting as far as like being taken care of or, or, you know, right, so, right, right, so right. you get different levels of, you get guys where you like, you pull out all the stops and you're just kind of like, uh, well, and it's like, I don't know what they were expecting. I kind of have an idea, but I was like, you came to the wrong place. But then, then you get guys like the guys from Polinar, man, where like, I didn't, I didn't even have a chance to pull out all the stops, man. And, and they just had the best time. Yeah. And so I'm sitting there having a blast because these guys are time. loving every minute. Yeah. So we'll throw something else at them and try to, you know, and, and try to give them at this thing. I mean, they just loved it, man. Oh but yeah. Well, apparently they weren't loving it the next morning. So and out, yeah. and <laughs> out, they're I used worked to with it. them the next they're morning. Totally used to it, <laughs> they're totally used to it though. Yeah. The, the. Those guys, so Las Vegas is a different, it's just a different place. It's yeah. a different place than the rest of the world. That's right. Whenever I see like nightclubs or something in other big cities, I, I, I walk in and I'm like, this is adorable. <laughs> because you've been to you Las guys, Vegas. You guys tried really hard on this. <laughs> I really appreciate this. Yeah. <laughs> because Vegas is another level. It's just and different. I'm not, and I'm talking about, I'm, I'm. I've been to Ibiza, right? A yeah. couple of times. Right. They're, they got some pretty cool stuff. It's not Las Vegas still. Yeah. Right. We just go really? so big and so nice and so yeah. fancy here. Not we. I don't, I'm not. I'm zero part of it. <laughs> I'm no part we of it. We are Sin Cityans. But, right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but I support it. Yeah. Um, and, and so then when people from, especially from other countries come and they get what 
our VIP treatment is yeah. that they're kings and queens. And when everyone right. asks me, like, when do you think Crazy Horse is going to open up again? I say, even if we did open up tomorrow until we get those international borders and all those tourists over right. here, it will never it's be the matter. same. Because yeah. those people where, go where all where out when they, mm-hmm. when they get over Absolutely. here. Absolutely. They, they, they set that, they set that mood. Because yep. mm-hmm. the locals, it's not the same thing. They no. don't, no. don't want to go in there. We're used to it. It's not even, yeah, it's not even risque for us. We've got pools. That this are isn't more Tuesday. risque than that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 man. Exactly. But uh, I, I did have a fr- I did have a friend that had a uh, an ill timed bachelor party a couple two three weeks ago from Florida, and they came in doing the old school like we're just gonna go to Vegas and figure it out. Just, yeah. yeah. Right. And I was like, oh, Wait. that's. That's not the greatest idea right now. Not with no, this time. No, 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 it's no. a weird time. And they time. did anyway. And they went to, they they booked a table at uh, one of the booby clubs. Yeah. And uh, and went in and apparently it's not a booby club anymore. No, it's yet. just a bar. They're only allowed to serve it's liquor. A big, and, and it's they a big have club. atmosphere yeah. models. One of, one oh, is that what it is? Yes. One they, of the places they put them that, in there. that we do hang out at, when we're because instead of hanging out at work, there's a place that of we course. do hang out at, and they they open up, um, and that's what it was: girls in bikinis. And you can't yeah. go up and give them money. Like, you oh, have to, you have oh, to put money in either. a bucket. No, oh, there's a wow. bucket that you have to oh, kind of go just over. Weird man, yeah, man. It's tough, that's just dude. Weird. It's tough. COVID yeah. has changed so. I mean, they're still much. showing up. They're still doing it, but it's not. Yeah, it's not what you came here for. Yeah, yeah. definitely not. But definitely speaking not. of like speaking about that, like what we were talking about, like things being weird in Vegas, it's. Because everything is so cheap right now, your flights are cheap and your your hotels are so cheap. The clientele is it's, cheap. I was gonna say I'm it, just it draws say a it. different. It it's draws bad. a different clientele. Mm-hmm. It's so bad. There's, I, I guess the fights are insane. I down there just right explained now. this. Uh, a, a a very old friend of mine just hit me up, literally on my way over here that I haven't heard from in ten years. And she was like, hey, we're, we're thinking about coming to Vegas. Stop thinking. Yeah. <laughs> we're thinking about coming to Vegas, but we want to get the lowdown. And I was like, okay, here's the lowdown. Um, we have a shooting on the strip. There's metal detectors at Fremont. Every week or two. Um, there are rap crew versus rap crew 30 person fights in the middle of the encore. Yeah. All through um, the, the pools. Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's, so it's uh, it's, it's a little different right now because, because the dime has dropped yeah, a little bit. Right. And that just brings in a different it does, crowd like, of people. Like you said, like, yeah, the people, it's, Wait, it's the and, same and thing. And that as, crowd of people, when I'm saying, when I'm saying it's a different crowd of people, I'm not saying, ah, and that's bringing in the poor people and the poor people suck. What I'm saying <laughs> is, what I'm saying is, when you pay, when you have to pay a a, a market value of something, yeah. you you respect that, yeah. you appreciate that you because you have paid it. the market value for yes. it, and, you, and you've invested in that exactly, time that you exactly. Spent. And if it's nothing, you know, then yeah. fuck it. Yeah, I mean, exactly. you have that, but then if if you look at, say, you went to um, a bar where the drinks are fifteen bucks <clears throat> versus a bar where they're four bucks. You're more than likely going to end up in a fight at the bar with so a different crowd. Yeah, it's a totally like, different yeah. crowd. <laughs> exactly. yep. it's a totally different crowd. Now, my crowd is pretty much the four dollar yeah, drink crowd. Oh for yeah, for sure. sure. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, yeah. but being older now, like we know how to catch it before it's happening right. and kind of separate yeah, yeah, ourselves yeah, yeah. from that. Yeah. You can you can kind SA, of smell baby. when that shit's coming. Around. Yeah, situational awareness. <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. It's a lot different. Of course, back then I didn't give a shit. Yeah. Oh, which brings us to another thing that that I that I didn't see on here. So then now I'm. Mostly making most of my money through, well, private lessons and and contracting gigs when I can get them. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's great. Aren't you, don't you? Aren't you contracting? No. Not anymore. No. You did? No. Not. I never contract. You, you, not not you, downrange. You got no. out and got out. I got out and got you out. You got out and got yeah, out. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. It's, it's usually the smart thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure the, the pockets would have felt a little different right. about it, but yeah. Right, right, yeah. But, yeah, yeah, but of course, yeah. I wouldn't be here doing what I'm doing. Exactly. So exactly. A, a totally different path. Yeah. But, um, so, I mean, I'm not doing, I, I mean, every now and again, I'll get something Oconus, you know, but yeah. mostly it's like somebody comes in town and wants a babysitter for a couple of days, you know, mostly yeah. EP stuff. Yeah. That's not bad. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's that's just that bad. the gigs are so few and far between, yeah. especially since, you know, I'm not, I'm not joining up with any agency or any kind of crap like that, yeah. and, you know, and letting, letting 
I've just, I've let somebody else take a bite of my money for so long. Yeah. You know, I'm just not into it anymore. That's I don't you, know that I will work I, for anybody ever again. That's, that's the thing, man. And, yep. and, and like, even, even being at the club, it, it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't feel like you're really selling your time. Cause you, you get back what you put into right. it. The All harder right. you work, the, the more you're going to make. Cause it's, right. it's, it's service industry. Yeah. Which is so. why, I mean, that bringing it, bringing it all in, which is why I, I saw like a, uh, <clears throat> A, uh, a a list the other day. Somebody sent me a list of the uh, average uh, yearly income uh, divided up by like, a, I, I guess, not really ethnicity, but it was like, you know, uh, Nigerian immigrants, Chinese immigrants, you know, uh, blah, 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 all right. the way down. And all of the immigrants have a higher yearly income yeah. than white people, black people. Bro, We're at me... the very bottom. And that's because <clears throat> everybody knows that if you come to America, you can work your ass Bro, off that's, that's exactly and right. actually get to a better place in life. Like right, and so that's why they come. The right yeah. now, like with all the bitching and griping about how bad people have it here in this country, it's the people that come from other places that are looking at them like, what the fuck exactly, are you about? Exactly, exactly. Like, when I was- This when I, has like, turned immigrants very right. Yeah. This whole thing. It has, yes. man. Yeah. It has because because that's the only, the only place left that they can kind of lean on to where they can hold on to that. Look, the more work I put in, the more I make. Because most of these people came from somewhere where like if you if you and I've had these conversations with these people. Mm-hmm. I've had conversations with people that have come from uh, I think for example the one, the one guy was from Hungary and he's selling life insurance and he's like you know where where he comes from he was either going to be working in the factory or cleaning this and cleaning that. Like mm-hmm. that was his only two <laughs> options. Labor. That's it. That's the only two options. There was no option to like, oh, I have a great idea. I'm going to start something. You can't descend. It's not happening. So it was either one or the other. And who was that? That was me. (laughs) (laughs) Second time. (laughs) (laughs) So it was either one or the other. So when he gets to where he can come here and and even selling life insurance. and, And when he was selling life insurance, of all things to be excited about, he's he's saying, wait. Wait, so what's the catch? And they're telling him, well, there's really no catch here. Like, you pay for these leads, and what you get out of those leads, you get this much of it. He's like, so so you're telling me that the more time I spend on the phone and the more time I spend talking to people, the more money I get, and, and you don't take more from me for doing it? They're like, no, that's yours. Yeah, right. He's like, so the harder I work, the more I make. They're like, yes. And he's like, why do you have poor people? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's such a good point. Yeah. My gosh, that's such a good point. Because there's yeah. opportunities like that everywhere, man. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They, do I see all? Especially if 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 these immigrants come from a socialist country. Absolutely, 100%, you know, even like yeah. even slightly so. Like yeah. there there are plenty of socialist countries that are just kind of like that because they just don't really have anything going on and so the government just does everything right. because there's just not right. really anything else just kind of have you know the, those shitty countries they handle it uh but uh but they they all come and you you see them you see them talking about listen listen people yeah this stuff that's going on is where i come from yeah i came here because of it yeah, yeah. they're trying to yeah, escape cut, it cut and cut now it it's out. becoming it yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, they're yeah. worried they're so worried that they escaped that, got here, and then now this is going to become that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, you you look at how <clears throat> how people are raised today, and and in this country, and I feel like, and and I've heard other people kind of talk about it, and, and and I kind of agree with it. There's there's this sense of guilt because we're all ingrained with the idea that if we didn't work hard for it, we didn't deserve it. So if your parents do well and you're doing fine without having to do something for it, then it feels like you don't have a fight. Like you don't have a, you don't you don't have a dog in this or in that. So like you have to stand up for somebody or stand up for something. And I and I believe cuz a lot of times when you hear from these social justice warriors, they're actually like these middle and upper middle class white oh, kids yeah, absolutely. that that haven't had to do anything mm-hmm. and haven't had so there's this sense of guilt and some I'm not saying all of it but there's some of that oh, absolutely. that's that's going on 
And and I think where some the of that comes from man, guilt. is guilt is <laughs> right. But <laughs> but it's but it's it's to make up for something else. And instead of you know, it's kind of like what what you and I were talking about um, over the phone or, or text message where we were talking about you know that that idea of of some kind of a physical training discipline, whatever it may be, man. Like like. Um, you know, I talk about this all the time. It, it, whether it's your your handgun training, it's some kind of firearms training, or sharp edge training, or jujitsu, or or if it's fucking rock climbing, whatever it is, man. A, a community that has the more people in the community that are that are invested in doing this type of physical training disciplines, the safer that community is. Absolutely, and and the stronger that community is mm-hmm. because there's and less, the more polite. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. Yeah, an armed society is a polite society. That's right. I, I always think about um I always think about uh that when when they redid uh Romeo and Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right? And uh-huh. everybody's just carrying around everybody's right. just got a couple guns on them. Yeah. Right? And not only do they have guns, but they're like, What's up then? Just anybody everybody cool? We're cool, right? Okay. Right. And they just whip them out all the time. Yeah. You know, which is a little different. Yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> I mean that ties back to our last we'll episode there. about yeah. not pulling your gun out yeah. in public. We'll, we'll get there. <laughs> yeah. that's, Eventually, that's, a, that's the wild west portion. But of that's it. the yeah. thing is that people are very polite. Mm. Everybody is very cordial and yeah. very polite because they know I have a gun right here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so uh, I mean I don't think that we should be that we should be shooting people left and right. But I do <laughs> think that, I do think that people need to get slapped. I think I think I. I think we should bring back slapping fools. Yeah. I think we should bring back slapping fools for saying stupid shit. You know, I think the way, the way I, the, my side of that. My, yeah. No, it's, it's fucking it's perfect. Bring back slapping fools it, for saying stupid bring back shit. Slapping them. Um, I don't think you'd have that much, like you said, even if, even if everybody wasn't just armed, just, just that, just that you mindset, yeah. just a, just a, a, you know, somebody that has something that they're physically invested in. Like I said, even if it's rock climbing, I don't care ballerinas. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. anything that somebody that's physically, like somebody that's invested time into into being trained mm-hmm. in some kind of a physical discipline. Yeah, yeah. centers. I, they're they're different. Mm-hmm. They're not the. Same. It's very rare that somebody that's a fighter like yourself is the one out there starting shit. Yeah, very you, rare. Very, very, very rare. rare. If it is, it's because something horrible just happened to that guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that too. That too. But, now there used to be a bunch of those guys. Yeah, but over the years, they they got weeded out. Right. You know, they're, like there yeah. used to be guys that fought because they wanted to. They wanted to be badasses. Yeah. Right. right? I fight because it's so much fun. Like I, I fight because punching people in the face when they're trying not to let you punch them in the face is a ton of fun. <laughs> Socking jibbers is like my favorite thing to do. <laughs> so when you see me fight, I'm smiling, I'm laughing, yeah. I'm talking, you know, I'm yeah. having a good time. That's great. Right. But there were those guys that were fighting because they want everybody to know that they're so a fighter. Ma- machismo. Right. Yeah. They, yeah. They, yeah. they want to, they want to be a fighter more than they want to fight. That's right. You know? And so, and so they, they kind of got, I mean, there were some. There were some guys. Uh, you've seen them. They're usually like gym monkeys. Yeah, like gym monkeys with terrible tattoos. A um, lot of East Coast guys. <laughs> I'm trying not you're, to say you're these really names. Trying not to say <laughs> them down. I, I know exactly. I'm trying not to say these names, but you like, know where I'm at. Badass might actually yeah, be yeah, in yeah. their nickname. Yeah. Oh man. Oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Just tough. Just guys that were that that were no, tough man, guys. I, w- I would hear stories I about to show like, everybody that they're tough guys. I, I think yeah. I know exactly who you're talking about. And and for example, like at um at the expo, the bodybuilding expo that we have, mm. Olympia, um. And and this is all hearsay, so so don't take me as like I, I was there, I saw this happen, but but I've heard about that the same guy that like somebody would try to come up to him and be a fan, and he'd just slap him around, and like, like just being a dick or shove him out of the way or oh uh, y'all know I've, I've I've I know these stories, I know what you're talking about, yeah yeah yeah, and that's yeah and that's those the are real stories thing, like I said, but 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 we don't we don't see that so much anymore, man, and like it's it's different I think because there's a lot, but then again. When that guy was fighting, like think about like Mark Kerr and Mark Coleman and stuff. The discipline wasn't what it is today. C- correct. And I'm not talking shit about the guys that were bad as fuck back then. And and, and I'm not saying that it they wasn't that they weren't disciplined. But those guys, 
it wasn't the same thing, which is why the sport evolved past them very quickly. Absolutely. And I know Kerr, I know Kerr hung on with with uh, with Boz as, as long as he could, but with everything else going on, I mean, the sport evolved past them. Absolutely. And and that's what we see here constantly now. No matter how good you are, the sport keeps evolving, man. And if you don't evolve with it, you you're just gonna go. Right it's gonna leave you behind. Uh, Matt Hughes, Hoist Gracie. Yeah. Matt Hughes. Hoist Gracie, the shit out of Hoist Gracie. Yeah. I love Hoist Gracie. Yeah. Like, just because he's an OG. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? And yeah. and there's a lot of there's a lot of backstory, a lot of like behind the curtain story about Hoist and everything that people don't know about that actually make him kind of more of a badass. Yeah. Um and then he comes back to f- and fights Matt Hughes. And I th- I think at the time Matt wasn't even the champ anymore. I think I, I think George St. Pierre had remember. already had already, you know, begun yeah, his yeah. reign. Right. And then uh and Matt fought Hoyce, I believe it was at the Staples Center. Uh I was there and uh and it annihilated him. Right. Did whatever he wanted. Not I mean, so he gets him in the straight straight arm lock, crossbody straight arm lock, pops his elbow. Hoy, of course, Hoyce, of course, of course, of course, Hoyce isn't going to tap. And we're on a Looney Tunes. He'll never tap. <laughs> right? so, so, so Hoyce gets his elbow popped totally backwards. Right. Right. And then Matt's like, well, I mean, I guess I'll do something else, <laughs> yeah. you know? And so then he goes and he goes over to this, he goes over to that, and he just does whatever he wants yeah. because it's not that sport anymore. Right. It's now a legitimate scientific based real sport. Yeah. You know, and now people are actually really believing in, you know, in uh, sport performance technologies and, you know, and uh, biomechanics and performance coaches and, you know, and, and, and movement coaches and, and, and even, even uh, sports psychologists and stuff like that. Now people are realizing, Hey, this is a real thing. Yeah. This isn't just tough people. Oh, yeah. Man. You know, there's a ton of the dynamics. Are there's a ton of just, not tough people. I actually know a, a, quite a few fighters that aren't tough at all. Really? Right? That are actually kind of kind of pussies, more really? or less, but more they, or less. But they're really good at what they, they do. Right. OK, they're really good at what they do. And they just focus on on what they're supposed to be doing. Right. And they 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 got the drive. They end it. up. Yeah, they, they they end up doing great because they're they're. Focusing on their training, on their technique, on the science, on the, on doing the things that you should actually do to overcome all of the things that you don't have. And so, you know, there's, I wouldn't say pussies because if you get in the cage, you're, you're another, I mean, (laughs) I I mean, in relation to all of the other people getting in the cage, (laughs) yeah, you're already just gnarly for getting in there and staying in there. Once the cage locks, you're pretty gnarly anyway. But on that right. scale, yeah, yeah. No, you know, you. yeah. yeah. Hey, so, so Vince, we're talking about this, man. Um, what got you started with martial arts? Like, how did that begin? Great story, actually. Do uh, you remember when Wet and Wild was on the Strip? Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, my God. or uh, yes. Up of Paradise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> I was working at Wet and Wild as a lifeguard <laughs> in the summertime, and uh, I was I uh, so free south season had just ended. So I, I was a wrestler, right? So I, I would wrestle, um, I would wrestle folk style or high school wrestling. And then as soon as freestyle and Greco started up, then I would keep wrestling through the summer basically. And then, uh, you know, have to figure something out, which was usually soccer, you know, in between those seasons, but there was still a gap in the summer where you don't have anything. And, and I was a wrestler like yeah. this is, that was my main focus it, Pretty much wrestling and singing kept me in school because I was bored with everything else. So that was that era. And chicks. Yeah, okay. you know, of course. Because <laughs> when you're, you know, when you're growing like that, mm. that's really the most important thing. Yeah. Is, yeah. is looking at boobs and stuff. Yeah. yeah that's, so that definitely kept me in school as well. Um, but uh, so I, I was driving or so I drove a motorcycle. I was going back and forth, you know, to work. And on my way every day. I would see this martial arts studio and they had really cool drawings on the window, like just super old school drawings on the window. And so I kept saying like, ah, oh, one day I'm going to stop by there and check that out. And then, uh, when I was a kid, I did, 
I did Taekwondo like every other kid. And then I did Kenpo like a lot of other kids. Um, and then I found wrestling, you know, and wrestling was real. Right. You really do. You're not just punching and kicking the air. You're right. really doing stuff. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, I, I had gotten to work one day and, you know, it was overcast. So they were like, anybody want to go home? I'll take that. So I get back on the bike and I'm headed home and I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and stop. It's, it started raining and I was like, I'm going to stop out over here. Because it's Las Vegas, so it'll stop raining in about six minutes. Right. 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 Yeah, yeah. So, you nailed it. So so I, I, I pull over and I go to check it out. I look in the window and I, my jaw dropped. I'm, these people are beating the shit out of each Is other. Master Toddy? It was Master Toddy's, oh, yeah. Shit. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> these guys aren't, they aren't just kicking the air and yeah. and doing, you know, katas and shit. They're beating the shit out of each other. Yeah. That guy's folding the bag in half around <laughs> yeah. his leg. And it, and and, he, and he's built like Santa Claus. Like, this is amazing. <laughs> so like I, I went in and I signed up for a... And I'd never seen Muay Thai before. Right. Really, I mean, that, this was like 93. Nobody had. You know, <laughs> like, it was still kind of hidden. Right. Right. And so I went in and I signed uh, me and my girlfriend up. For like an introductory introductory lesson. Okay. So go in for the introductory lesson. And uh, the guy that gave me the lesson is a guy named Melcher Menor. Uh, Melcher Menor is my senior. He is also a world champion. Um, his first title fight was at the same promotion as my first and only amateur fight. So I only had one amateur fight. Um, because you know why? Yeah, yeah. Because why get socked in the jibbers awesome, without man. getting paid? Yeah. So for real. <laughs> <laughs> really, what it was is I I was a last minute replace I was a last minute replacement for that fight. Oh, that's right. And then my second fight, I was a last minute replacement, and it was a pro fight, so I couldn't go back to amateur. Right. So I was just okay. Well, we'll what just a keep way doing to this. go yeah, Right. Yeah. That's awesome. So uh, so he, so at this time I'm 16 years old. I'm in wrestling shape, you know, and. and and you know, long and stringy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I, I think that I'm going to be doing pretty good at this. Yeah. And he cleaned my clock. Oh man, he made me feel so helpless. <laughs> I was like, I have to have this. <laughs> yeah. I must so have this. This is <laughs> this is amazing, <laughs> right? And so I fell in love instantly. That's so beautiful. much so to where I'm. I'm pretty sure the statute of limitations is over. <laughs> for this by now but i went to the high school that i went to specifically for wrestling and it was assisted okay so that i would wrestle there i got you right yeah so i wrestled there through the summer and then when it came time for wrestling season to start you know a, a third of the way through the school year i was already super entrenched in muay thai and world or sorry, yeah, world championships was coming up. Amateur world championships was coming up, and I wanted to. I, I was. I wanted to try, you know. Yeah. And so, um, I had fought a fight to to get onto the team, and I won that fight that I totally shouldn't have won. But I shouldn't have won my first ten fights. I, I <laughs> really at, at all. I didn't know what I was doing. I did what but the guy in the didn't. corner told me to. But yeah. you you won. Oh yeah. Oh no. I won in dramatic fashion. But I was just like, okay, what's next? Right. Boom. Next. Next. Hook kick. Bang. Bang. Okay. What are we doing next? <laughs> we get, can we keep going? All right. And I just <laughs> did great. whatever. My coach was just in the corner like this. Yeah, I was about to say, like a game control. Up, down, A, B, A, B, start. <laughs> right? And so. Uh, You're sitting there like, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> like the like a street but fighter. But you know what, man? Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. The just, different that, options on your street fighter game. That doesn't just work on anybody, man. It's the same thing as like when I'm talking to her. When I talk oh, being her being coachable up, is a big thing. Bro, when I when I gas her up about like you you watch her run a full auto three oh eight and it and it looks like most people running like a like a SIG MPX because she's she's taken to the instructions so well and that's what she's like ah right, it's because he showed me how to do it i've showed thousands of people yeah. probably tens of thousands not exaggerating i probably showed tens of thousands of people how to do that the difference is is, is like you said being coachable being coachable yeah just and th there's a lot to being coachable also i mean we could get into yeah, like there is. proprioception and neuromuscular connection and all that kind of fun <laughs> stuff oh yeah but, but yeah, you yeah. know we could we could dabble in that but uh Anyway, so uh, I got on the, I, I qualified for the U.S. team. And oh. so here I, so I have an option. I can either go to Thailand 
and wear red, white, and blue and and basically fight for America. Yeah. Or I can go to Reno and wear what was it? Blue and green and and represent my high school. <laughs> and I was like, hmm. Uh oh, were you Green Valley in high <laughs> yeah. school? Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh oh. Yeah. She says uh oh. You uh, no, you guys smashed me in swim every year. So, so swim? Yeah. They drank chlorine for breakfast. Probably uh, Athletics was a big deal. Oh, I know. At that school. I know. Yeah, yeah, big. And deal I grew up in school. North Las Vegas. It was not right. in North Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that was pregnancy. Was really popular yeah. then. Yeah. If you weren't pregnant, you were in the swim team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. There or I track. was. Or track. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's where they did excel. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> North uh, Las Vegas is... Yeah, but now you're going somewhere else. The hood. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, just explain to the viewers, listeners. So, uh, anyway, so I, of course, chose Thailand uh, and uh, went to fight on the U.S. kickboxing team for amateur... The first ever IAMTF Amateur World Championships. Oh, yeah. And so there were... We had four guys. We had four guys on the team. Um, I mean, from and, that, uh, that's got to be addicting. I mean, and I, dude, I was I'm 16 years old yeah, in Thailand yeah, right. without grown ups. <laughs> that's so great. And there's no like drinking age or anything yeah, like that. Yeah. And there's no really. And there's no. And it's Thailand, so nobody's nobody cares about anything. So they're not like watching you or right. anything like that. <laughs> oh man, it was it was it was an arcade. Is what that's it was. Awesome. Yeah, it was. Giant, it, giant yeah. Oh arcade. man, it was awesome. And th that was so. That's my senior year of high school. Yeah, 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 graduated a little bit early. So it was my senior year of high school, and uh, and I spent. I think we were there twenty two days. Of wow, of excused absence because it's U.S. team event. Yeah. So how, how long were you fighting out of that twenty two? Uh, three days. Oh shit! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the rest of the time, they like took us on tours. Oh wow! And like we we went into the palace and we went up north and we went all over the place, just like showing us super cool. If you've never been to Thailand, you need. To see everything quickly, like to just see, oh, oh, that's really cool. Next, like you need a month, right? Yeah. You need a month. There's so yeah. much cool shit there, and uh, the best thing about Thailand is, while there is a lot of cool shit to see, and the food is obviously amazing. I'd imagine. Oh man, I'd imagine, and I, the spice levels, I'm sure, are oh, fucking oh, up there. We oh. have a, we have a, some of the the guys that I hang out with now, um, a few of them. They go numerous times. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they love going to Asia, man. It's because they, once you of, go, last time they went through like Vietnam and everything. I, I love Vietnam too. Vietnam's yeah. beautiful, beautiful man, so pretty, and they got the weirdest food. But uh, everybody in Thailand is so, they call it land of smiles. You know, like oh, that's a great marketing really? thing. But no, it's fucking true. They they're so nice, yeah. really. And I don't mean Hawaii nice. Okay, if you've been to Hawaii. Yeah. They're like, huh, thank you. Just give us our money and get back on your plane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not talking about like like local Hawaii. Like you're talking about like no, 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 no. like like yeah, yeah, yeah. like tourist Hawaii. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not like yeah, Molokai. Yeah. Oh no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 not, not local. <laughs> I got you. No, local stuff is the best. The, yeah. uh, the actual Ohana is the the yeah, hell yeah. the comfy shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, like tourist tourist Hawaii, right. the main island. Everybody That's really in my only my only experience. Not, I hope they won't go off on yeah, this. Yeah, but, yeah. but my only experience of Hawaii is Molokai. Oh yeah. I mean, other than having to bounce around to get there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, going through. A uh, couple of the other islands to get there, but that's, dude, but that's yeah, because so that's good where for you. when you're when you're here <laughs> when you grow up here, that's actually the best way to do Hawaii. But unfortunately, you know, the Hawaiians don't want you to do it that way. But well, if you say you're from Vegas. For the most you're part, you're from the Ninth Island. But, Ninth but Island, man. For yep. the most part, man. Yeah, yeah. For the yeah. most so part, so you get a little bit of a pass. You get yeah, some, right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. then you got to show that you're not a bitch, <laughs> right? And then you're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, we the, the whale watching and with the snorkeling, and oh, there's cool, nobody yeah. around, so we didn't have to deal with the, you know, it's it's kind of a kind of a, a hidden fucking gem. That's dude, awesome. Because, so, um, the way that worked out is because I was never home for Christmas anymore after joining the military. I kept missing Christmases, so finally my parents were just like, well, this kid is a condo in Molokai. So I don't know how they came up with it, but they were like, this kid is a condo. So every Christmas... I'm going to pause him. His parents are probably the coolest parents I've ever been around. I have 
great in-laws too. Yeah, I'm really great lucky. In-laws. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. they so so the one time I wasn't supposed to make it for Christmas, so so they planned on but I ended up in upstate New York. I had already come on leave from from changing uh-huh. my units, going from Germany to New York, and uh I'd already taken my leave. I had some extra, but I had to go back to my unit. So I go back to my unit and I'm trying to sign in, but it's Christmas time. So they're like, hey, so you're stuck here and in processing for two more weeks while everybody goes on leave. And I'm oh. like, oh, screw you. I no, got I'm, leave. I'm back. So I called I called home, and they were just like, well, why don't we just put you on a plane to get us, get you to Hawaii with us? I'm like, fuck yeah. So we did, and uh, that, that was my Hawaii experience, bro. And, and I'm telling you, if that could be your only Hawaii experience, there's nothing else like it. Oh, absolutely. Being on being on the, on the with the locals, hanging out with the locals, and, and being – on like there, there's things that I just you'll never forget, man. Absolutely, it's, it's a totally different. There was no tourism at all. And the the my the Hawaiian friends that I have, mm. uh, they don't have they don't have tons and tons of friends. Right, you, you make it past that that lip, you make it past that that you know frontage. Yeah, it, as soon as you're in. Your uh, brother, your family, yeah, right. you're locked in. Yeah, they will die for you. That's right. dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in to get back to Thailand, it's just like that. Yeah, yeah. but it's everybody all the time. That's so <laughs> they're great. so nice. Yeah, and they're so helpful, and it's genuine. It's genuine. They really. I've had uh, probably, and I've I've spent all together. Like if you add it all together, a little over four years in Thailand. Um, the longest stint I spent was 19 months. Wow. Um, oh, wow. What was and, the setting and for I went that? For, I went for three months. I went for three, because I would go for three months at a time yeah. and, and train and, okay. and maybe fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went for three months and then I had a fight coming up like two weeks after oh, I was yeah. supposed to go home. So I extended and I went and I stayed for another three months and then I had more fights. So I stayed for another three it months took, and it, 19 months later. Wow. Yeah. wow. <laughs> 19 <laughs> months later, crap. I was like. I wonder who has my dog. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Back home yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. A year and a half yeah, you were yeah. out there yeah. once. That's so, so cool. Uh I would say in the time that I've spent there, I've probably had dinner at somebody's house that I had just met that day thirty times. Hey, our friends that we told you go all around tell us stuff like that all the time. Yeah. That's yeah. that's so yeah. common yeah. for out yeah. there. That's right? so cool. Yeah, that is. that's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, I, and, and I mean, when I've in been... America could you could you have right, that happen? Exactly. Exactly. No, everyone's like, you yeah. can't. No. Don't yeah. follow yeah. me yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> you, I'm <laughs> private. Uh, I mean, you get that. Yeah, you have to be in like really rural. I've been area, in yeah, houses like, like, like you talk about like this big. Yeah, what? I've been in houses, full houses, this big. With a train track six feet that way, <laughs> not even joking. Yeah, no, a I, train I track it. six feet that way. This house is actually made out of like, like uh, corrugated steel. <laughs> yeah, and and they've got this much food, and they give me this much. Right. Man. How like cool it is, is that, dude? I man, I have so many stories that yeah. I can tell you about how I was, <laughs> I was you know uh, stranded or lost or something yeah. like that. And, and then somebody took you in. The first person that I talked to became my savior. Right. Because wow. everybody's waiting to be your savior. Right. That's cool. Because everybody's man. so damn nice. And this is at such a young age that you're experiencing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, I started, I start. I mean, my first trip. <clears throat> was 16, correct? Was 16. And then. Uh, they, did they space out after 18, that? Okay, so it was 19, still a while. Yeah, man. Yeah. I, I, there was a while there that I did just like every year I did three months. In Thailand and why would you while. not want to? If you experienced yeah. oh, it the way that you did, especially, I would man, want to. Especially if you're getting something for it too. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. You know, you're not. You're not oh, going yeah. on. You're not paying to go on vacation. Like well, I know. I'm getting you're there for a reason. I'm man. getting the the really good training, and this is way before it was cool, right? To go there, and I know everybody says that. Oh, I did it before it was cool. Yeah, but I did it before anybody even knew it was possible. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, at least in Americans, I'm the yeah. first American to ever fight in Rashadamnan Stadium. Um, wow. I'm the first awesome. white guy. I'm not the first white guy. There's a couple other white guys, a couple of Dutch guys, an Australian yeah. guy, and then me. But um, the first but U.S. citizen. I, yes. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So, uh, um, I mean, there would be. I remember, okay, so I was there for, I was there for, for, I think like three months. It was coming toward the, toward the end of my stay and wild on, you remember wild on the, the show wild on wild on with Brooke Burke. No. 
Okay, so it was on E. It was a show on E. It was called Wild On. And they would do Wild On Thailand, Wild On Italy, okay. Wild On Australia. Right. And Wait, it would is be... that where they do the rap battles and they talk shit back and forth to each other? Negative. No, that, that was Wild and Out. Wild and Out. I was trying. So close. Oh, trying. So close. <laughs> oh, I felt like I was legit Chanel West Coast of this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just that was a very Chanel West Coast that 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 statement. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't a plug either. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Wild On came to Thailand to do wild on Thailand and and they were like oh we want to go check out a training camp a Muay Thai training camp and and whoever they were talking to said oh well there's a white guy at at uh, Khao Samrit which is the the place that I was at um the the camp that I was at so camp is a whole thing unto itself like when I'm in Thailand I'm not living like a like a American dude right like I'm in camp, I'm I'm sleeping on a bed with four other dudes. I'm I'm waking up every morning at at eight thirty, running five k, training for three hours, then doing my hand laundry, eating breakfast, hanging out three o'clock, another five k, another two and a half hours of training. Yeah. You know, like it's you're that's life. It. Yeah, it's you're, life. You're earning all of it. And uh, and so they the production crew came to the camp. And they were like, hey, you know, we just want to check out what's going on and stuff. And so I showed them around a little bit. I hadn't seen, I hadn't, I hadn't spoken English, like real English. Right. You know, they, the, the guys at the camp knew a little bit, you know, and yeah. as we try to teach me Thai, which I speak now finally, but um, it took a little bit because uh, it's tonal, which is a whole other bag of worms to get into. Like yeah. you can say the same thing right. with a different inflection. It's just totally like it, it is a completely different word. Yeah. And to us, it sounds like you're saying the same word with a different inflection. Right. To them, they're like, why would you eat an elbow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> why would you do that? I don't, I don't know. Oh, oh, you're you, rice. You said rice. Oh, okay. Really? Like, yeah. The words are that similar. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's like, it's like it's that crazy. with a lot of, a lot of Asian. Yeah. 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 So I there's was... five different tones. So you can say dog, dog, dog. Dog, dog, different things. Not, yeah. not all that dog. Not right. all. So, uh, cow, 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 cow. White, rice, horn, elbow. Oh, shit. And that's all different Holy variations shit. of the word cow? Cow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Yeah. Isn't that's, that crazy? That's cool. That's crazy. So, when cool. you're having the word, when Fuck, you're having, hard. when you're learning, yeah. and the guy's like, Oh, you're all over the place. And you say, and you say, uh, Pombai Ginkau. And they say, no, 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 no. Ginkau. That's what I said. Pombai Ginkau. No, 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 no. Kau. <laughs> man, I said Kau. Yeah. Yeah. I would. Oh, yes. oh man. It's oh, a, yeah. probably it's, frustrating. It's a process. Sucks, like, it's I a, said it's a process. That. <laughs> but so this is the first time I can speak English because it's American film crew. And, uh, and, you know, of course, Brooke Burke is there and, I, I, you know, I haven't seen that either. Right. You know, I've that. seen all these dudes yeah, yeah, yeah. for every day for the last <laughs> three months. And so I'm, I guarantee I was like, Ooh, Hey, you guys want to go do this? You want to do that? You want to hang out? <laughs> you want to, I can, I could do whatever, whatever you guys need. I could, I, you know, so I was like, Hey, you guys should come to the fights tonight. There's some really good fights tonight. And, and at, at Lumpany, actually, I think it was Rashid Amnon. And uh, 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 if we just meet out front, then I can take you guys. It's like $30 for ringside, and we can go and watch the fights and stuff. And they're like, yeah, yeah, that sounds, we should get some fights. Yeah, we should We should go do that. I waited out in front of Roger Stoneman Stadium uh. for like an hour and a half. <laughs> they oh, totally no. stood me up. They totally <laughs> stood me up. Because I'm positive that I was like way too excited. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bro, I, there's very few times, because... Because especially being, like, so I was huge into uh, MMA until the Ultimate Fighter. Mm. So, so I was, I could tell you, fuck, back in the day, I could tell you who came from Hook and Shoot, who came from, from uh, Gladiator Challenge on up to King of the Cage, uh, you know, when Boss Root yeah, and King yeah, of the Cage. Yeah, and yeah. and, and uh, I could tell you who trained with oh, who. You know who was I the remember... main event on the very first ever Boss Root King of the Cage? I don't remember. Kit Cope. 
Fuck off. Are you what? serious? What? <laughs> Are you serious? Where's, yeah. the, where's the applause? <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah, something else that wasn't in the intro. Boss yeah. 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 No shit. Yeah. Boss Rudin's shit. king of the cage. Well, I probably have it. I guarantee you I have it on a fucking DVD. Oh, for sure. cool. I guarantee you. Me I, well, I probably Sweepie have a bunch of your shit the main event. I probably That's have a bunch awesome. of your shit. It was my first ever MMA fight. That's fucking cool. I had cool. zero training for it. Uh, so how did you? How did, so where did you go from, from Muay Thai to mixed martial arts? Where did you start adding? Uh, so I, I, fought, um, I fought that one. That was in like ninety eight. What I mean is that before any kind of ground training? Any? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh fuck, you were just yeah. I had I hadn't wrestled in a few years, but okay. I'm like, oh, I was a wrestler. Well, yeah. This should be fine, <laughs> you know. And uh, and I remember they gave me uh, they gave me a, and I didn't know. I I mean, I knew I'd watched the UFCs like when the video tapes came to Blockbuster. You know, yeah. and I'd rent the videotapes yep. and stuff. Yep. You know, like I I had watched oh, yeah. those, yeah. <laughs> but. I didn't know, but that was when it was still all like style versus style. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It wasn't when everybody knows jujitsu. Yeah. Everybody, yeah. Kn- you know? So it was like, so <laughs> I, I didn't really know much. And then they gave me this, uh, it was a promotional DVD. And in the promotional DVD for King of the Cage, right? Which hadn't, hadn't thrown a show yet. Right. Right. Yeah. So like this show's coming up. It's going to be the best, the best. It's going to be the yeah, biggest. Yeah. What's got and, Boz's name on it? So of you course, like. of course. <laughs> and so, and his picture, his cartoon <laughs> yeah. picture. And so he goes, which looked exactly the same as the yeah. big guy on the UFC poster, it was on the original to, UFC yeah, posters. It's just with him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, uh, I remember watching the the promotional DVD, and there was a little part in the promotional DVD where there was like um, like a little technique coaching. And they were like, I guess, uh, so one guy grabbed a heel hook on another guy and coach was like, spin out, spin out. And I was like, okay, I'll just spin if that happens, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So I get there and I'm doing the, I'm doing the interviews. Uh, and, um, they had Don the Dragon Wilson. Oh yeah. Don the Dragon Wilson doing interviews. And he asks me, I, I had like a sweater vest on. Like a white t-shirt. I don't know. I have bowl, to see like this. Bowl haircut. I gotta see this. Oh yeah, yeah. It, I was, bet good. I have it. it was good. So we'll go uh, watch it after we're done with it. I had one eyebrow, I think. So uh, <laughs> and how old were you at this time? I would have 19? been like nineteen. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or no, no, no. I in two thousand and or like ninety eight. I would have been. I was nineteen. Yeah. 19? Oh, 20. I was twenty. Okay. Was okay. 20. Yeah, yeah, I was twenty. So. Uh, Don, Don Wilson says, uh, you have to say the dragon. He's the dragon. The dragon says, uh, uh, he's like, so, uh, have you done any, uh, have you worked a lot, a lot of your jujitsu, you know, in preparation for this fight? And I was like, no, nah, but I've seen a bit of it on TV. So I'm, I'm and, I, and, I, and, I, and I go, and I wrestled, you know, in high school and stuff. So I'm hoping that kicks in. And, and he started me. laughing. And he was like, cut, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's, <laughs> they didn't let it roll. Let's, no. oh, <laughs> because let's do they that again with that dude. Oh, fuck. Right, let's do that again. So I, I toned it down for him. But uh, but yeah, that was my that was my first MMA fight, and then it was like um, and, and you then, won. And no, 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 oh, no, no. no. I was going to uh, say you said that, yeah, and no. then you beat oh, his dude, ass. The fight is hilarious. Is it? It's hilarious. In what first manner? Of all, I shoot a double. Right, I shoot a, the kickboxer. I shoot a double leg. <laughs> pick him up. Turn around and dive on him. Boom! Big takedown. Yeah. Then uh, I get up and I punch him in the face and I drop back for a heel hook. <laughs> no idea how to do it <laughs> at all. But- at all. I know. I stick his toes in my armpit and I turn his heel this way. Yeah. That's what I do. Right. That's how it on TV. So, right. <laughs> and so I've got his leg laced between my legs and I'm. But got his toe in the armpit, and he's got wrestling shoes on. So I'm like, you know, I've got great grip, grip and everything, him, right? Yeah. yeah. So do I, by the way. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, uh, so I'm doing it, and I'm cranking, I'm cranking. I'm like, why isn't this working? What? Meanwhile, my legs are just like spread apart like this. Yeah. You know, I yeah. no clamp whatsoever. I'm just turning it, and his legs just going like this, and I'm like, why isn't this working? <laughs> and then he goes, and then I hear his corner go, roll. Roll out of it. I'm like, oh, I know this. <laughs> I know what he's going to do. And so he goes to roll, and I grab a knee bar. I just end up in knee bar, yeah. right? But I don't know. Clamp my legs. 
lay down, yeah. you know, hip in. So I'm I'm on in a three point stance. I'm in a three point stance, knees and hand, and I've got his leg right here, and I'm pulling up on his leg. <laughs> Right? My knees are spread apart right. like this. I'm just pulling up on his leg and he's trying to crawl my back. He's trying to crawl my back and I'm like, why isn't this one working either? <laughs> None of these things work. <laughs> so so uh, we go to scramble and um, and I go for, uh, so I scramble, I, I let him go and I go to turn into him and I go for like a little fireman's cheap tilt. And as soon as I reach my hand up under, under, under his leg, his arm comes around my my neck and I'm in a, and I'm in a rear naked choke. Yeah. Not even a good one, but I don't know how to, I don't know right, what right. I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. So to you. Yeah. So yeah. boom, that was it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I need to watch. No this. idea what I was doing. You can see, I have no idea what I was doing. The striker, the striker went for the takedown. Oh yeah. 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 Happened, yeah. I secured the takedown. I mean, it was a <laughs> no. big double leg. Yeah, it was a it. big double leg up in the air and everything. But there was nothing after that. There was, a, <laughs> there was, there was just, there was just, uh, like tripping on myself was pretty much what was left over to do. Uh-huh. And, the, and the guy that I was fighting, I had already beat in Muay Thai. And so he also fought Muay Thai, but he had been training jujitsu and stuff for a couple of years. Right. And so he kind of had that up on me yeah, a little bit and that, uh, but I didn't fight again in MMA for, I went back to Muay Thai, yeah. you know, uh, I literally, I only fought that fight because they asked me to, Yeah, you know, they came, they, they asked it. me. So I was like, ah, oh, sure. I got a habit of doing that. It's so cool. How willing you are that you just lunge into these things with such confidence. That's, yeah, that's really cool. Well, look, that's, a, but that's how you had 10 wins that got you into, right. you know what I mean? Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. I mean, well, at the very least you're going to have a great story. Yeah. And look at fucking this. Right. You're going to have a great <laughs> story to tell. We're yeah. over here cracking you know? up. So I, I think I waited until 2003, maybe, to actually start fighting MMA. And mostly because um, uh, my coach, Master Toddy, he's a very old school Thai guy. And so he didn't want me to get a grappling coach. He didn't want to get me, he didn't want me to get a jujitsu coach because then that would mean I had another coach. Right. And oh, I really? always only had him. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so, <clears throat> um, what he would do is we had this big tarted guy, and he was actually a big tarted guy, right. like a like a giant yeah. tarted guy. Yeah. Um. Uh. And he had him. Yes, I say the word tarted. I thought Deal you said target at first. Tarted guy. No. Yeah. No. Like. Yeah. Slow. He's slow. Yeah. Yeah. I he's slow. It. Simple. I get it now. So. Um, you guys will catch shit for that, by the way. Probably for me saying in that. the yeah. comments. Hey, yeah. I, that's an appropriate kid. Yes. Kit, so, stop yes. saying okay. stuff like that. <laughs> right, now oh moving on. So moving on. Uh, so um, I say gay too, and it has nothing to do with sexuality whatsoever. <laughs> right. No, <laughs> right. Yeah. So, Everyone's just so easily offended exactly. nowadays that you know exactly. we got to soften the blow for him. I don't. So you, you guys know, can do that. That's why. You, that's why you're here. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. We <laughs> are man shit. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, do I have to pay you for saying that? Not at all. Yet. Oh, not yet. yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Until we start wait till I, wait, yeah, wait till I Michael Buffer that shit. Yeah. When we make, when we make right. more than a dollar for five podcasts. <laughs> Dude, man shit's the same. It's starting to slow. <laughs> so uh, uh, he would have this guy chase me around the ring yeah. and I uh, to try to take me down, and I would just have to avoid him. Yeah. That was my grappling training. Huh. Mm. Really? Yeah. So So just to avoid being on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So his thing was don't get taken down. You were doing the Apache. Oh, like, okay. Hit and run, hit and run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I just won't get taken down then. That yeah. sounds good. Uh of course my next fight happens to be Kenny Florian. So I was like, um, I should probably learn mm. some of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like and the thing is that Master Tati wanted me to fight MMA. Because he wanted me to represent him in MMA, mm-hmm. and he saw how popular MMA was getting. Was that was that going into uh, <clears throat> Ultimate Fighter Two finale? The the, the finale, right? You the finale of Florian in the finale. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah of right. Ultimate Fighter Two. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, and uh, I believe Nick. That was when Nick fought Diego Sanchez. Okay. 
Nick Diaz fought Diego Sanchez. Because Di- but Diego was from the first one. Right? Yes. Yes. That's yeah, right. Yeah. yeah that's exactly. Right. Right, okay. So yeah, I was still kind of paying attention back yes, then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was still. Yeah. I still they knew were, who was who. It and, wasn't. It wasn't fully yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimate Fighter. Game. Right. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah there were still 155 pound dudes fighting at 185, so they could be on the show. <laughs> yeah. Back then. Yeah. So, um, uh, so I got I I I booked a uh, house in Big Bear. Um. At the same time that I was training for my fight, uh, and now before this, I had helped Tito. I was going to say that. Yeah, I'd helped. Talking about big bears, yeah. I'd helped Tito with a couple of his fights, right. you know. And I was I was bigger at the time. I was you know I was I was a one eighty five er at the time, um, uh, thanks to good pharmaceuticals <laughs> and uh, and and dry baked chicken breast. And so uh, uh, when I went up. It just so I was kind of on team punishment. Right. When I went up to Big Bear, everybody else had shit going on. Tito oh. was in like Iraq shooting a movie. Right. You know, uh, uh, Dean Lister was opening a new gym in oh, San shit. Diego. Ivan Salivary was opening up a new gym in Washington. Like the only I called, I kept making calls, kept making calls, and the only person that could come was Rampage. Okay. And I was like, Andy Jackson. That's not going to help me a whole lot. Yeah, yeah, but I really appreciate it, homie. <laughs> you know, like it you was, got the I slam down. Really so appre- yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so I ended up actually. Co- so at the same time that I was training for my for my fight, I was helping uh, Alicia Moore Pink, the singer. Mm. I was helping her get ready for her tour. Wow. Okay. So we. So she was living in the house. I was. I was cooking for her, you know, twice a day and showing her how to cook, you know, good food right. and that kind of thing and right. and training so that's why her. She looks the way she does. No, yeah, makes, right? She's a, she was a gymnast. Oh yeah. She was a gymnast no, she when she like was a young. Gymnast. That yep. makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. That makes perfect sense. I mean, look at her okay. in the, on the trapeze and stuff yeah. like that. But like, that's what yeah. I was saying like that's what, you know, she's always had that athletic look. Oh, she's like, a stud. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's a stud. She hits like a truck. Yeah. Oh man. Hell yeah. Oh man. Yeah, she hits like a truck. So so does Carrie by the way. Something and he doesn't even hit right, right? Because okay. I mean, he hits right for him, but he's yeah. so broken. Oh, like the dude's yeah. husband, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Carrie Hart. Hart. So yeah. he's from here. So he's been he's he's had like two hundred and sixty <laughs> broken bones or something like Holy that. Shit, yeah. You know, because he's basically like started the whole freestyle <laughs> yeah. motocross yeah, thing. Right. You know, he was the first guy to do the backflip on a motorcycle mm-hmm. and all that stuff. So he's got a lot of broken bones. So his body's all kind of broken. And right. so he it does it different. So he punches a little bit differently, but it lands so hard. Yeah. So hard. And it's always just knuckle right on the target. Yeah. It's, they did. They both did really well. Good, man. But um, so I was getting her ready because she was getting ready to go on tour. She was quitting smoking and, and the whole thing. Like it was it was like a, a I was like working and working, you know, yeah. like <laughs> right, right, right. burning it at both ends. Um, I finally got somebody to come up and train me. Uh, I had met the dude one time. He refereed a, a fight of mine in Northern California. Uh, Dennis Superman Hallman. Anybody know Dennis Hallman? Dennis Hallman sounds familiar. It sounds really familiar. Dennis Hallman beat Matt Hughes twice, <clears throat> both in under 33 seconds. Uh, he, wow, he, he like arm barred him in like 17 seconds and he rear naked choked him in like 33 seconds. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. I don't remember. So that's a pretty good name to, to have on your, Absolutely. Yeah, on your belt. Especially with what you're um, looking to do. Yeah. 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 So he comes up. I like I, I called him three days later. He was in Big Bear. Cool. I'd met the dude one time yeah. ever. That's you awesome, know? man. And so, and he stayed with me for like five weeks. Yeah. yeah he's not from wow. Thailand. <laughs> no, 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 no. He's from Washington, actually, yeah. Olympia, Washington, okay. to be precise. Um, and so that dude did me as real solid. Oh, you yeah. know, came out and and the thing is, is that I had a yeah. I'm pretty sure that statute of limitations for that's gone too. I had a uh oh, <laughs> gotta check. Gotta check Somebody will probably be mad at me, but <laughs> I had just, I had just. Uh, snapped my ac joint in my uh, shoulder right riding motorcycles okay with carrie yeah and uh so the day that i scheduled my surgery is the day that i got the call from joe silva 
to have my first ever UFC fight. Right, with Florian. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, well, I can't I can't say no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can't yeah, say yeah. no. You say no to Joe Silva, and it's like, is he going to call again? Right. You know, plus, <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't be in the UFC at all. <laughs> you know what I mean? I shouldn't be in there at, at all anyway. Right. You know, like I, I had, I yeah. think at the time I had, uh, I had three MMA fights or something like that. I was two and one. Um, and so I was like, I was, I, obviously I was, I was in based off of my, my, uh, kickboxing credentials, right, right. you know? Um, but people have to fight for years yeah. and years and even get stuff to at. get there, yeah. you know? To get on a list. Yeah. I mean, I guess I, I did as well, just, but not in MMA, you know what right, I mean? Right. And so I was like, man, this is a chance that I have to take advantage of. And so I was like, okay, yeah, I totally love to have that fight. <laughs> and um, and at the time, though, Kenny Florian was not jujitsu sizing. His last couple of fights, he was Thai boxing. Okay, right. His coach was a Thai boxing coach. Okay, obviously, he's also a black belt in jujitsu. You know, but All I was right. like, maybe. Just maybe he'll try to stand with you. He'll want to like test his shit, <laughs> you know, against the kickboxer guy. Yeah. As soon as the bell ring, it was like instant takedown. Like, <laughs> yeah. ah, like, most of the fight it was me trying to stop him from taking me down. Right. Like, no, that, I'm sure. I'm sure that his corner had it. Was most, oh, oh yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, anyway, so I, since that had just happened before I had agreed to the fight. I had a busted shoulder. I had a separated AC joint. And so sometimes training sessions were, you know, two hours. And sometimes they were like 40 minutes because yeah. my shoulder was toast. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And so it was, it was like a balance between, you know, not breaking maintenance for good yeah. and, you know, still training for the fight yeah. kind of thing. And so, uh, and so that was, that was my first uh, UFC fight. And then, that's that was actually when Master Tati and I parted ways. Yeah. Oh. Because he actually he actually didn't didn't even come to the fight. Wow. Really? Yeah. So you, know you get when you're the main event, you get ringside seats and you you get two ringside seats at that time. Yeah, you yeah. get two ringside seats and two seats in the in the audience, you know, yeah. deeper in the audience. Yeah. And I gave my mom the seats in the audience and I gave oh. Master Tati and uh Mad Jean, his wife the, the ringside seats. Oh, and when I got into the octagon and I looked over, they were empty. And what I was a like, feeling to wow. have. Oh. And that was right before the fight. It was yeah. right before the fight. And I was like, ah, yes. <laughs> You're like, hey, Ma, can you come down? We're going to do this alone. <laughs> Mom, I give you the wrong yeah. ticket. We're going to do this <laughs> without him. And so, uh, and so I had that, had that first fight. Um, uh, the feeling. shoulder just went completely right away. I mean, we had actually hit the, we, he had eventually at the end of the first round, he had gotten my legs out and, uh, I smacked my butt on the mat. And at the same time, my elbow hit yeah. the ground and it was just so painful. I kind of froze for a second right in the AC. and then, oh yeah. And then, and then he grabbed an arm bar and, and then he didn't, he didn't actually finish that arm, but right. so I'm in the arm bar. And I'm was just like, like trying to bell, hold. Right? Yeah. It was and, at the bell. Yeah. Cause, cause Dennis, uh, uh, yeah. So Dennis was like, uh, uh, you, you got, you know, I think he said like, you got three seconds. It was like 10 seconds, by the way. <laughs> by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, you, you got three seconds. You better not tap. You better not tap. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to tap. <laughs> and, and then it was getting straight. It was getting straight and I started feeling it. And then I was like, uh, and then I heard the bell and I was like, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> and so he thought like that he had got it before the bell and he got up and, you know, celebrated and stuff. Right, but then we, yep. we still had that. It took me a bit to get up off the ground and yeah, drag yeah. my arm up. And then when I, when I came out for that next round, I was like, okay, let's get this up here. <laughs> Quit. That's so right. funny. And I tried to, I, I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm, I'm going to wing a head kick. I'm going to wing a head kick. Yeah. And it was my fault because I leaned back. I know not to lean back. Yeah. I know not to lean back. And I leaned back, and my toes brushed his lips. <laughs> and then he took me down, and he choked me. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Rune could choke again, by Again? The way. Yeah. The same move took you down twice? Yeah. Oh, man. 
Well, I do have a question for you. In what ways are you able to utilize your um, your martial arts training in real life? Like in your everyday life, I should say. Um, I'll, I mean, I, th- I think it, it, it bleeds into everything. And I think that that martial arts training started with started with wrestling for sure. Right. So, I mean, wrestling is a martial art. Right. You know, the, yeah. the Americans don't like to call it that, but it, it is. is a martial art. Yes. Right. Same with same with uh, pew pews. Pew pews is a martial art. Yeah. That is a fighting art, right? So, um, pew pews. Shooting. We saw what you did with your yeah, hand. Yeah, pew, yeah. Pew, yeah. Pew, pew, yeah. pew pews. Pew right? pews. Right? It's a martial art. <laughs> so, uh, um, wrestling is, is kind of where it really started. Because when I was a kid doing martial arts, um, I was just doing what I was told. Yeah. You know, I didn't have a whole lot of comprehension really going on. You know, I was just kind of going through the motions, trying to figure out when we get to punch each other, Yeah, you know, kind of thing. And and then when I started really wrestling, like really wrestling, like getting good and, you know, I'm actually winning and shit. Um, uh, there's nothing, there's nothing harder than high school wrestling, high school wrestling. Really? Okay. College wrestling is so much easier. Than high school wrestling. High school wrestling is all about breaking you. It's Uh, just about pushing you so far, so much farther than you even think that you can go. And then you see how far you can go, right? And it's just wrestling in high schools is about weeding out, weeding out the bitches and yeah. And actually making men, okay. yeah, you know, so, work. So ethic. yeah, so from the beginning, it, yeah. you, you already had life experience that that you're carrying around today. for sure, right? For sure. So I had right. that work ethic yeah. from wrestling, right? You know, that work ethic and the ability to ju- to embrace the the shit, yeah, yeah right? Yeah, to know that you're actually just, not done when you think, yeah, you're, exactly, you're, exactly. To to know that I'm I'm hurting, I'm tired, I can't breathe, sweat stinging my eyes, my bones hurt. But I got some more, right. you know, like that's what wrestling yeah. gave me. You then, know, you find you find that with like <clears throat> like in the military, um, some of the best things that I got out of high attrition rate schools and selection processes yeah. was was coming out of that with more than just what I with the school and and being selected for, you know, something more specialized or whatever. But um, but that experience yep. of like I'm still putting on a smile no matter how fucking gnarly it yep. is. Especially when somebody's doing it next to you, and you're like, "All right, I'm not crazy." Yep. Like, yep, yep. Because then you see, then you see the guys that are like, "Oh man, they're gonna make us do that now." But I just, I'm gonna suck at it. I'm like, everybody's gonna suck at it, bro. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. We all suck at it right now. Like, we, yeah, yeah. My arms don't hey, work. Shut up. This is shitty for me too. <laughs> yeah. Everybody. There's, yeah. That's why you start with 400, and there's select 97 of you. But when you like that experience, I think that's and that's I'm just I guess I'm just relating that. Like in I the just, days of 400 going out. Right. Yeah, in the days of that, because now it's not. Yeah. 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 yeah, oh man. Yeah. When we went to quick story, when we when they had uh, the black rifle crew, they had us go to Bragg, okay. basically to do a meet and greet to get more people to come to selection, right? Really? Okay. To get more people to, to sign up, uh, so we did it at um, uh, the like the SF like signing place, yeah, right you know, right. and. Um, so, I mean, we had a line out the door around the block, you know, yeah, a few yeah. hundred dudes. And uh, and because the class that they had just before that, they had, I'm, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but the, uh, I wasn't briefed. No, I, so they, they, we, we just heard recently, Tim um, Tim Kennedy talks about it. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay, he, okay. Yeah. He, he talks, talks about, about the numbers, point. so you, you're oh, good. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so they had like 40 mm. go out. Right. 40. Four zero, go out and oh, shit. after the first eight mile ruck, they lost twenty six. <laughs> Bro, yeah, <sighs> yeah. That's why Tim. That so Tim says it all the time. That's why he's allowed to do what he does, <laughs> yeah. as far as doing all the well, podcasts. Oh, he's, I bet. he's yeah. recruiting now. He's oh, recruiting, yeah, because yeah. yeah, they don't have the numbers. The thing, like when that's what that, that I don't get. Under, I don't understand. I think that's what, there's some of the stuff that you and I have in common is like there's there's things that just, it's just not an option. Like it doesn't matter how bad it is. Like I came here to do this. 
Like, I don't understand, like, like to quit in selection, like, you pull your white tape off and you go and put it up. I and, couldn't do and, it. I would have but, to die. But guys did it on the very first fucking day, man. And all you did on the first day was, like, a swim test, which sucked, but whatever. You know, they spray you yeah. down with a hose with all your with your full uniform on, and then you, and you, and you swim. That actually was the hardest part. Them, them tearing out all your clothes and tearing <laughs> up you all your stuff. Like, your... Yeah, yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's what I... Oh, that's... I turn towards it. the camera with that. Let's see it. Let's see it. <laughs> that's what I, that's what I yeah. give when people start giving me the wine. That's great. <laughs> but now on day one. And so... I don't. I don't get frustrated at people like that. I don't. I don't get. You know. I don't have. Everybody like a, has their spot. But but at the same time, on that day, on day one, I was like talking shit. I'm like, what you? The fucking army paid for you to come down here and waste everybody's fucking time. Like, what did you think you were gonna get? I man, I was pissed. But then the rest of the time, you get guys quit, and I get it. I mean, even though when I went through, it was three weeks, and it was. I guess after I left, man, they dialed it down to like two weeks, and they they softened it up more recently. But but when I went through, man, like. That first week was the only time that they were real, real total assholes. The rest of the time, they don't have to be, man. Right. Like the rest of the yeah, time, yeah. you walk all day yeah. long with a sixty pound tick on your back and do this and do that, and they do. They don't have to be dicks, man. I mean, they're not friendly, but that first week is the only time when they're kicking shit on you, talking shit to you, and smoking the fuck out of you. And like, that's mm-hmm. the only time is in that first week. Because and so, they're like, if you, trying to get those dudes, they're trying to get them out of yeah. the way so that yeah. we can do the rest of it. Yeah. But and and so when guys quit during that stuff, like like I said, I never, I don't look down on guys like that. I don't. That's. That's it's like one of the cadre used to say all the time. Like my brother's, he would say, "My brother's a doctor. I couldn't be a doctor, but he couldn't come and do this. Right? It's not for everybody. And if it ain't for you, pack it up. Give me your number. Right? And and uh, and he's right. Absolutely. Um. However, there's an ass for every even, seat. My dad's ass. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and there is, but um, but even if I felt stood there right there and been like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. I'd have fucking finished it. <laughs> Absolutely. Like, Absolutely. I came here for three weeks. I'm going to be here all three weeks, man. If I decided that it wasn't for me, mm-hmm. I would have to finish and then be like, this ain't my shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ba- I mean, basically. And then I would actually feel even better about it. Like, I'm I would, still a I would, man, but this isn't my shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, <laughs> I can do all this shit that and, you guys do, but I don't want to. And you know what? And it's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's not even like a, like a macho thing or a pride thing. I think it's. I don't know what it, it's just. There's just something no, there where I'm like, you know I'm here is? to do it, man. Like I gotta finish it. Like it's just. It's a man thing. It's man shit. It's a man thing, dude. Yeah. It's a man thing. You said and it the, twice on the show. Now he's getting two yeah, pennies. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> and the, like, stacking chips. <laughs> <laughs> stacking and, uh, copper. And the yeah. <laughs> and the uh, the the thing is, is that those 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 things are now unexplainable. Just like you're saying, I don't know what it is. It's not a macho thing. They're unexplainable because they're not in the they're not in the 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 ether anymore. They're yeah, not well, people don't talk about them all the time right. anymore because they're not making men anymore. Well, because they're making now, dude guys. Because now it's it's there's something wrong with feeling bad about quitting. When when before it was like if you if something felt wrong about quitting, you should learn something from that yeah. and, and grow from it and don't quit next time. And like, it's, it's the same thing as you should, you should, you should feel scared, anxious or any of the above, you know, Livio and I just started doing jujitsu and every time I'm terrified to go, I tell him, awesome. babe, maybe we bravery. should go tomorrow. And he pushes me anyway. And we go regardless of how I feel. No matter if I want to back out or not, we go. Mm. It doesn't matter. And then halfway through it, she's like, oh, yeah. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, But that's called. She's that's getting called, her ass kicked. And she's like, oh, I'm so glad we came. That's called bravery, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you weren't scared, There's it wouldn't no be bravery. Thing. That's right. And it wouldn't be worth it. Exactly. That's what we tell the kid all the time. It puts so much worth into it. If you actually yeah. overcome something that you you don't want to do, your gut's telling you this isn't a good idea, or whatever your feeling is, and you overcome that shit, it makes it even better. Every fight. So Every yeah, single fight. I bet. Every single fight. Yeah, you still, yeah. I get there. I, get, I, I don't even know what's going on on my way to the ring. I don't even... I, I, I have no idea what's going on. I see the crowd and I smile and I react to the crowd and I dance <laughs> and I and I have a good time and I and I entertain and then I get in there and then they start doing the announcements and I'm like, "Yeah, what's up? It's me. You guys are here to see me. You know, you watch what I do, you know, and I and I feel good about it." And then the announcer gets out of the ring and then it's just us. Yeah. And then he goes, "Go." And I'm like, "Shit." <laughs> <laughs> 
There's a guy over there <laughs> that Trained. has been doing nothing but training to kill me yeah. for who knows how long. Yeah. And he's good at it. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Why do I do this? Yeah. yeah. And then I throw a punch and I see this happen and I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's, that's why I do this. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I uh, fucking love you, dude. Oh, that was so awesome. Right? But you, but you, yeah. I'm scared every time, and yeah. even the I'm not scared of I'm not scared of dying. Mm. No, I'm that's not scared not of getting hurt. Yeah. I'm scared of looking stupid. It is my ego. I'm scared of what I look like. I'm scared of looking like I don't know what I'm doing because I want to look like a confident ass bitch. Well, that's the thing is, I don't want people to see through me. That's when, that's when, you know, that's how we just, we discuss it with the kiddo. And when, when she has to tell her like, I don't use the C A B word, you know, like confident, but, but when, um, you know, if she gets to where she's frustrated about it or whatever, and we have to tell her, like, maybe, like, if you ask Kenzie May, what does it mean when something's too hard? She'll tell you it's because you haven't tried enough times, and it's and it's just what I drill into her head since she was itty bitty, and and she sees it, and she uses it. So now we're at the point to where, like, if something's hard, it's making it worth it for you, and she doesn't get that, but she will, because just like I used to drain, train, I used to draw all the other shit in her head. Now she's starting to understand what all that meant back then. So when we're talking to her now, like it's hard. It, it's gonna. It, that's what makes it worth doing. That's why it's, it's gonna make it worth it in the end. And and you won't learn anything from it if it's not hard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you just went at it and you're good at it, you won't enjoy it as much, baby. See that and and just to bring it back again, you. It, it, I know it, it takes a, a little bit to get there, but that is also man shit. That is also <laughs> man shit. I know plenty of women. Uh, Kayla Cummings, uh, Jacqueline Carrizosa, that are way better at man shit than most of the dudes that I know. Yeah, <laughs> because yeah. bro, you're all ladies. Usually dude, because man shit, yeah, oh, yeah, <laughs> Lacey is yeah. pretty top notch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, she's, she's a gnarly. cool chick. She's not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's got. I actually haven't met her. She's oh, been, oh, I'll you tell haven't you met right her. Now. Oh man, she's she, amazing. And she and she has. She doesn't even like do it on purpose. She doesn't know no, why. It's she just does. genuine. She's she's so genuine. Yeah, at, at everything, she she will just do it because yeah. it needs to be done, right. and then go like, "Whoa, did I just?" Hell do yeah! That? Yeah. Wow. Is, All right. Is she teaching <laughs> you know, jujitsu yeah, yeah. classes she's, right she's now? She's teaching boxing. How okay. amazing! She's teaching boxing. Cool, she, I I'm bet like, you're one proud dude. Oh man, she's so <laughs> good. And she she would be fighting. But the on, the only shows that are happening right now, the only fight shows that are happening right now, are shows that have viewership. Yeah, and she okay. just started. Yeah, so she needs to fight in the smaller shows. She's had, it, she's had her first. That fight. Ne- uh, yeah, uh, which she annihilated. That's what ago. I remember. Oh, really? I was watching oh, on. Yes, I only caught yeah. anything from your story where you right, were like, right. you yeah, were like yeah. oh my god, oh. that was awesome. She and not, She looked like dude. Even the commentators were like. Is this girl a pro? <laughs> she yeah. looks like a pro. That's so great. She's I love it. smiling the whole time, having a good time the whole time. Was she it, learning? She's not learning with the Diaz, was she? Uh, no. So she's, so her jujitsu coach uh, is actually uh, Hanato Canuto and Raquel Paalui. Okay. That here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At, okay. at Checkmat here. Okay, cool. Yeah, Raquel Paalui, uh, she fought in the UFC. Um, I think she just won... Uh, worlds or something uh Hinato has won worlds a couple of times um if if you've seen like highlight reels of a dude like doing flying arm bars and cool yeah. back shit yeah. pat backflip passes and shit like that it, it was probably him yeah. he's so exciting to watch he's cool. so much fun so he's not a big guy to ro- no, no 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 yeah. he's he's uh he's he's getting a little bit bigger he's probably a, a I think he's a buck seventy. Okay, you know, but that, like walking weight, right, buck right, seventy. Right. Yeah, you know, um, super dynamic, so much fun to watch. Um, totally different style than than Nick and Nate. Yeah, Nick and Nate's style is I'm going to do what I want to do, and there's nothing that you can do to stop me from doing right. that. And, and that's why they're so brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, and they've always, yeah. you know, and that's one thing that that's why people either love or hate those guys. They, 
they nobody's kind of on the fence about real. those two. No, no, no absolutely. They, they're like, very polarizing about both of them. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You either love those guys or you can't stand mm-hmm. them. And you only you only hate them if you don't know them. If you've never met, it's kind of yeah. the same with me. Like I've I've seen I don't know how many internet things that say like. Hey, I met Kit Cope today. He's actually not an asshole. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> He's actually a really cool guy. Yeah, man. You know, like, it's a, it's the same. If you know those guys, so people are always like, oh, they're so disrespectful and blah, blah. No, 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 no. They're extremely respectful. Yeah. So respectful. But they're intense. For man. people that deserve respect. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And if you, at some point, decided to sign on the dotted line to fight them, that means you at some point them. in your head, you thought that you could beat them, and they take that very offensively. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> it's offended by that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. They're like, really? Bro, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> you, you want this? Oh, you, you shouldn't have done that. You should have, and they, then they show you why. They take it personal. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So I've, All right. I've, I've that been made, working that with start, those that guys. Makes sense then. I, oh, thought, yeah. I thought they were yeah. just selling fights. Oh no, no, not at all. There is zero salesmanship. That's zero. Just them. No salesmanship really? going on at all. Really, they are That's genuine, good to hear, man. That's actually they're good to genuine. Hear. They really are okay. offended. They're really <laughs> offended. Okay. They I, really, because a lot of times you see you see all that going on, and then you see they got respect for the people afterwards. You always just assume like, oh, they were just trying to sell that fight. Now they're good. Oh, no, no, they're they're they have shown you the error of your ways, <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. now now we can be cool. Yeah, right. yeah you get it now, right? <laughs> you ain't sign that line if again. you don't get it. If you don't get it, we could do this again sign right now. It again, <laughs> you know. So they, they are they're extremely genuine. They are that. It's been used over and over again. It's it's been regurgitated too yeah. many times, but they are really, honestly, as real as it gets. Yeah. Those dudes are so real, and that's why I I, I love them. Yeah. I love them. You know exactly. You know exactly where they stand yeah. on everything. I I don't I don't barely have to ask Nate anything. I already know. I already know because he wears it on him. Yeah. He, he, you know exactly what. What he's about. Shit. Well, God damn it, Kit. I think we're yeah. at an hour oh, we and a half. We could yeah. keep. Yeah, we, we could honestly just keep going. I haven't, I've been so careful not to tell too many stories. No, you're doing <laughs> so good. I, 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 I love it. it. I got to tell you, man, it's fucking refreshing to have somebody like me on. That that can actually that actually can talk as much as I can because I can just sit here and listen. And finally, like he's the guest. So that's I, the yeah. sound bite, though. That's the sound bite. It's so refreshing to have somebody like me on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, can you do that ten second clip, including that this week? Right. <laughs> <laughs> this no, somebody right. like me. No, like me, me. not yeah. me. Like, like me. me. <laughs> you are like me. That's and why. I mean, yeah. I, and you know what I meant by that. Absolutely. I, absolutely. It's a great soundbite, though. Because we're so fucking different, man. You need to put that on one of these. We're so fucking different, man. Oh, but yeah. One of, one of the programs. One of the, yeah. one of the DJ buttons. Yeah. yeah. That's when my daughter comes in and she sees those color buttons. She's like, oh, can I play the DJ? Yeah, and I'm like, it's <laughs> like no, I, hear, I hear you, though, because it's, it's especially in this in this format, right? Because yeah. this is, I mean, podcast, I mean, this is. This is the new like talk show. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Right. Absolutely. absolutely. Right. So, so, uh, and uh, aside for, or uh, in contrast to how like talk shows were before, yeah. right. You had, you know, four or five talk shows. You picked the one that you were all right yeah, with, closest you know, with. and yeah. it, now there's so many yeah. to choose from. You actually get to, you actually get to listen to people that you give a shit about what they're yeah. saying, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know? So sometimes there now there is I believe way too much content out there mm. and that is evidenced by the quality of that content yeah. right there's just a ton of shit yeah, yeah. out yeah. there right but there's also if, if you weed through the shit yeah. you get stuff like this where it's actually people that you want to hear what they're actually say you want to appreciate like that, if somebody yeah, sees if somebody sees you guys and hears you talk for for a minute they're like yeah. i want to know what's in that guy's head 
Yeah. This guy, fuck yeah. I could listen to him tell stories for well, that's, days. That's good because I do fucking tell stories all right, the time. Right, dude, same here. You know what's funny? <laughs> like, well, just, on that talk. same note, though, we need to hold some stories for next time. Yeah, we're doing like some... Because we had... I don't know if you saw that little 10-minute clip that we did where uh, it was just her asking questions. And so... It was, like, a, it was a quick fire session. So I was like, yeah. what was the worst bathroom experience? And we heard about like, Levio shit in his pants. And, oh, like like... Like yeah, quick, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Weird, like like not standard First thing questions. thing that comes yeah, off yeah. of your mind. Oh, oh, oh yeah. shit, I'm surprised. Yeah, that happened this time. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man. So listen, that's like a ten minute clip, man. And it's I even laugh at it when I hear. It. I was like, oh fuck, that's me telling stories. That sounds like a good that, time. That's why yeah. people listen to me. Yeah, like, it's I, great. I've never heard myself tell a story like that before. So <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, okay. Lacey, all the time, she's like, she's like, I. Do I need to know that detail? Yeah. <laughs> Do I need to know? Do I need to know what it smelled like in the you, room? But you have to be there. You have yeah, to be yeah, there, exactly. man. Like, exactly. You're, you're walking down I'm the story with the me. Like, absolutely. Yeah, I'm setting the whole stage. We're I'm telling walking you how through the I forest felt. together. And you can yeah. just won't get it. I had a same. cramp in my left butt yeah. cheek. Yeah. Like, you know, a little bit of a fog from the night before. Yeah, like, right. I need you to feel what I was feeling. Right. Yeah. So yeah. you know my experience. You have to get it. Yeah. Dude, I'm with you. I'm with you. Fucking yeah. Bro, because I, I, especially when we get on a certain subject, man, and, and we actually didn't get on subjects today. Right. Like, <laughs> like, I'm sure next time you're on, it'll be subjects, and, and it'll it'll just go on. Like, between the two of us, it's just probably another hour and 30 on, on opinion. Oh, easily. But, but um, <laughs> I noticed On an opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, so I guess maybe that's, that's, a, that's something we should just plan on in the future. Yeah, oh, for sure. Write it out. For sure. This, yeah, I mean, this, this is the get to how know, easy get it? to know our friend Kit. Episode. Right. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll be oh, yeah. a, a regular guest. Hell yeah, yeah, that means you're coming back. Absolutely. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, I love yeah. it. I'm cool with that. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool, Fuck dude. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And we got. We'll, we'll have to. We have some more content. We'll have to make together too, man. Like. Absolutely. Our, our, yeah, I need to make content for for Manship Brand. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Absolutely, man. Partnership right yeah. here. We're gonna be we hopefully. Got you. Hopefully, we're dropping shirts in the next week. Sweet. We're we're gonna talk about that now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, no, no, are, no. Up? Are we? Oh. <laughs> oh, are are we going to talk about that now? I mean, I guess. All right. All right. Well, um, yeah. So we're going to be dropping shirts the next week. <laughs> oh, hey, good idea. <laughs> That's a great idea. So mostly, man, like, like, um, it's it's a lot of it's just to kind of support what we're trying to do. So we're we're trying to. Get, yeah, the, we're, get the message wait, out there. We're not just trying to be a t-shirt brand. Right. That's not what our motive is. Yeah, I mean, it's just to support the, the dream. And and right. you know what, man? If it, you know, the selling T-shirts is to us the idea when we first started with with let's we need to make some T-shirts so that people can help us push the idea of what this is. Which is why the T-shirts, the one is it's an RMR on a Glock, and and you know what I mean? It's on target. So send it. I mean, it's it's about do that training, get that training, yeah. and then the other one is like like. It's, it's actually. Oh, yeah, we didn't talk about training like at all. Yeah. Hardly. Yeah. Wow. We talked and about it, your martial right, arts yeah, training, yeah, yeah. And, and that's and what this episode was about. And, and, you and uh, there's another one. You know, changing a magazine said, "Run your run your drills, not your mouth." And 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 it's all that idea because the idea that we're trying to get across there, and and we've said this before, especially with all the new gun owners, is get your training. And wow, so the man, more people yeah. that are wearing the shirts Can't be that, that show that 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 represent mm-hmm. that and represent our what we're trying to say. The more you not only support what we're what we're saying and what we're doing, but also help us keep doing this. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. So and and uh, yeah, like this this whole thing, man, is just something that we all believe in, man. And we're super excited to keep doing this, and we're and we're fucking super excited that Dude, you come on I'm, here and do it. With I'm us. I'm into it. I mean, I'm I'm a believer. I'm a believer in the in in the the end goal. I guess I'm like I like we talked about coachability earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I fully believe that I got as far as I did because I was coachable Yeah, because absolutely. I, I, I was able to, to yeah, yeah, I was able to, to, I mean, I don't even think, I don't even think I had a, I had a battle with ego when I, you know, when I, I started you, training, right. you know, and I definitely didn't have a battle with ego when I started training tax stuff because and, like, I was like, Oh, this isn't my world. I never wore the uniform. I will, I, I will keep my mouth shut. And keep my ears open right. and and look to impress. With That's, that being yeah. said, look at how far you got. Without an ego, look at how far you got. Well, when you realize when you realize that e- that your ego isn't real, yeah, you know, and it some people will never get there. No, right. they'll never get there. <laughs> Unfortunately, yep. but yeah. when you realize that it's not real, 
that the voice in your head that says, oh, you better say something, otherwise you look like a punk. Yeah. And you realize that's not you. No. Yeah. That's not no. you. Because, it, and and I, I say that's not you because people think that they are their thoughts. Yeah. Right? right. You are totally not your thoughts. You know how much shit gets put in there that you yeah. have no idea? That was cool sound. Number three. That, that you have to, yeah, yeah, that was the thumb this time. <laughs> yeah. How much stuff gets put in your head yeah, that man. you have no idea that's even coming in? You don't realize you're being influenced. Out of the corner of my day. eye over yeah. here, I see zero dark 30 or whatever's over here, you know? Yeah. That went in there. Yeah. That went in there. You overhear stuff. You see stuff on the television that you're not really paying attention to. What Whatever there is, there's a lot of input. Yeah. Are right? You, are we losing battery? We're losing battery. So we're going to wrap this up here. Right, uh, make sure you guys hit the like and subscribe button, the bell notification, all that YouTube stuff. Uh, if you're listening on Spotify or Anchor, um, think about maybe doing a uh, subscribership. And we'll see you guys. So polite. Think about listening. it. <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> <laughs>